You could call it the physical backbone of our nation. Infrastructure goes beyond the state of roads and bridges. It helps keep supply chains moving and our economy strong. But could the weight of reliance we put on our current infrastructure be too much without more help? You can see how much stress there is in this. This is oak. This week, we're looking at where the money from the trillion dollar infrastructure bill is going. We need to appreciate broadband as a utility. It is not um, something that you earn through wealth. Whether it's enough to make a difference. This is The Race. There may be no better example of how much we rely on our infrastructure to be strong than dams. But if you're like me, you don't think about them that often. You just expect them to do their job. But the people we talk to here in New Braunfels, Texas, say that's the problem. They shouldn't be taken for granted, and they have the video to prove it. What do you remember about that day? I remember it so clearly. How could you forget this video? The exact moment in 2019, the Lake Dunlap Dam broke. Two miles upstream from Larry Johnson's home. The Guadalupe Blanco River Authority shared this video on its public Twitter account. When I first saw this, I had to know more. Larry walked me through what used to be the bottom of the lake behind his home. There were stumps and trash that we needed to get out. Now it's his yard. Right now we would be uh, eight feet underwater. Within hours of the dam's failure, the water level dropped seven feet. For three years, docks and boat ramps here have led to nowhere. Because that's your diving board right there? Yeah, that's the diving platform. The local water district blamed the 90-year-old dam's aging steel for the failure that luckily didn't kill anyone. For as much as you knew that the dam wasn't in great shape, did you ever think that this would actually happen? No. I mean, who would? This dam's failure is one of roughly 40 that have happened in the past decade, according to U.S. Society on Dam's president and civil engineer, Del Shannon. It's distressing, you know, we, we have the ability to, to, to fix these things and, and it's a limited amount of resources to do that. I had Dell meet me at this dam in Denver. He graded our nation's dams for the American Society of Civil Engineers Infrastructure Report Card. It comes out every four years. While he says most of the dams that have failed were small, cases like what happened in Michigan in 2020, when two dams failed and wiped out 150 homes, is why he gave our nation's dams a D. I gave him a D because, uh, well, I'm a pretty harsh grader for one, but I guess, but I don't think any dam should fail. About $3 billion of the bipartisan infrastructure law is going to dam-related projects in hopes of changing that. Dell says that's a start, but more money is needed. That's the problem with the whole infrastructure challenge. Until something like this happens, it's just not real. This is what the Lake Dunlap Dam looks like today. The Texas state legislature failed to pass a bill to pay for the project. So Larry and his neighbors created a water control and improvement district, a government entity, and voted to raise their property taxes to pay the $40 million to rebuild the dam. And none of us would accept no for an answer. Larry expects the dam to be in operation summer of next year and for his water level to return to where it was three years ago. What's it gonna be like when this refills? I think it's going to be the very next day back to what it was, you know, I mean, like where your grandkids just start up at the back door and take off at a gallop all the way down and leap into the water. And for the life that comes with it to return for years to come. Now, it might be hard to believe, but in the year 2022, there are still areas of this country that do not have access to the Internet. Now, there will be federal dollars, billions of federal dollars funneled into these communities, typically rural ones, to try to get as much broadband access as possible. But I did travel to one community who already found out their own solution, and I discovered that this kind of broadband access is a true game changer, especially for students. I can see how many are using it. I can see if Michelle is on it at three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Wait, really? So that's a good thing. <laughs> Wait, really? Well, what finding out that your that? mom can see you chatting online with friends at 3 a.m. may seem like a big deal. How do I delete this? How do you delete this? <laughs>
Don't know, I haven't gotten that far. <laughs> it is a drop in the bucket compared to the last two years that Raquel Viegas and her daughter Michelle have had. I couldn't get on the test or the Zoom because it keep kicking me out and I would go back in and the test, it would, just, it would just load and load and load. Like I hated seeing that circle. It was just, it was in my nightmares circle. The nightmarish loading <laughs> circle is something that so many families across the nation can relate to as the pandemic exposed a weak link in rural America's access to the internet. It was strange. Stressful, it was overwhelming, it was frustrating. The Viegas live on the outskirts of Odessa, Texas, a boom or bust oil town that's one of many spots on the map without access to reliable internet. According to the FCC, 6% of the country's population lacks internet access. Narrowing in on rural communities, one in four households lack access. And that's 14.5 million people. I couldn't get on and I would call my mom crying because I was like, mom, I'm going to fail this. Like my grades are so low because I can't do the assignments. And I couldn't even email the teacher because I didn't have internet. We started doing some, you know, searching and, and data exploration. Discovered 39% of the students that we served either didn't have internet access in their home or had marginalized internet access. The discovery that many of our kids do not live in an area of our community that even if they had the money, they could access the internet. It simply didn't exist. Scott Murray is the superintendent in Ector County where Odessa is located. With that large of a percentage of students who couldn't log on for remote school, they had to think of solutions. So they decided to shoot their shot and contacted SpaceX to be a part of their Starlink internet access pilot program. And they said yes. This big dad started to cry because he understood as a parent what that a simple little dish was going to mean for his children. We did it ourselves and it's easy to put up there and get it connected. What Ector County has is a unique public private partnership. However, federal dollars will be trickling into efforts to tackle the same issue nationwide. $45 billion from the infrastructure bill is going towards equitable broadband access. We need to appreciate broadband as a utility. You know, it is not a special thing that only certain people have. It is not um, something that you earn through wealth. Ooh, this is bad. Look, it's not loading. It just goes on there. Look. Next year, Michelle is entering high school, and both her and her mom are relieved to have reliable service because it will help put her on an equal playing field for the rest of her education. And that is something even a mom and a teen can agree on. Something that we, we do all need, especially us that don't live in this city. If you don't have a good internet source, you're not going to be caught up with everything that's happening now. Like, you're going to be left in the past. I'm Vanessa Bashan, your reporting. The race continues next.